Hi, I'm Marty Nemco. Becoming a public intellectual, that is going from an anonymous researcher to a famed and more impactful one. In many fields, the best-selling product may not be the best one, but the best marketed one. Alas, that may be sometimes true of scholars. The most famous researcher may not have generated the most useful findings. In a modest attempt to write things, write that wrong, here are some thoughts on how researchers might gain their deserved acclaim. Of course, many scholars would rather forego fame so they can work the way they want to, or they may find self-marketing tawdry. This little talk is for those researchers who are sufficiently intrigued by both the increased impact and the limelight. First, it's important to choose a timely, wide-reaching research area. A psychology researcher whose family member suffers from Munchausen by proxy syndrome might thus be tempted to research that, but such a choice reduces their chances of getting funded, let alone fame, because that illness has just too few sufferers to have major impact. It's not fatal, and it isn't synergistic with the zeitgeist. In contrast, a psychologist's prospects would be better if studying, for example, depression, autism, or Alzheimer's, especially as it affects one of today's priority foci, women, racial, ethnic, or sexual minorities. The next key to becoming uh, a thought leader in your field is to aim for the top ranking journals. Today, journals are ranked in impact, how often it's cited, uh, its articles half-life, and so on. Browse those journals to identify fits to your research area, and then aim to submit articles of the quality that's found in those journals. Next tip, you've got to work on your public speaking. The word shocked is overused, but I really am shocked when I attend an academic conference and I see how terrible, yes, terrible, most of the speakers are. Of course, that also uh, <laughs> suggests uh, why... Uh, the amount of learning that accrues for students is so is so little, but that's a whole other, a whole other topic, which I've addressed in many other videos and articles. In any case, you need to work on becoming a good speaker. Um, I did create a video for the International Society for Intelligence Research on how to give an effective academic talk. You can probably find that by uh, Googling Nemco Effective Academic Talk or something. And I've written a, a broader general article on public speaking, um, on psychology today. I think it's something called uh, Good Public Speaking Without Fear. You can Google that. A point I didn't make in either of those, you got to squelch any perceived need to be stuffy, especially in your talk's title and in the abstract that goes in the program and on the conference website. And you got to continue that accessible tone, especially in your talk's introduction and its conclusion. As long as your content is excellent and clearly presented, being enjoyable will enhance, not diminish your credibility. For example, calling your talk the Kong Factor is better than a Veramax rotation of G-related variables in a Scotland-specific GWAS. Next tip, submit proposals to the most prestigious conferences, lots of them. Even if you're rejected from many and accepted just by one, or maybe even if it's just a poster session, that adds prestige to your resume and in your reach outs to the mainstream media, which I'll talk about in a moment, you can say you spoke at that prestigious conference. Work the conference. For example, review the attendee list and make a point of chatting with the most influential people, especially those related to your field, and inviting them to visit, you know, to attend your session. Ask if they'd like to have dinner with you or accompany you on one of those evening entertainment events that conferences typically offer. And when you get together with them at one of those things, don't just talk shop. Try to build a personal relationship. Go public. When you have worthy research findings, work with your university's media relations office to craft a press release or an article, which you could write in plain English, not academies, that will entice the major media. That should highlight your research's practical implications. The press release should also, if it's true, state that you do well in interviews, and I'll talk a little bit more about how to do that in a moment. 
If you're good on the phone, you might leave voicemail for key reporters or editors, for example, science reporters who have written about psychology in the New York Times, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, Times, CNN, and yes, Psychology Today. I'm focusing here on, on psychology because um, this, this appeared as an article in Psychology Today. Consider posting regularly uh, on your field's online forum as well and tweeting your research findings. The final tip is be media savvy. You have to be. Most academics are terrible in a media interview. They're too abstract and too long-winded. Instead, prepare one to three sound bites. That's a sentence that's powerful and clear. For example, the con factor could unlock one of life's great mysteries, the roots of intelligence. If explaining your methodology in an interview, pretend you're talking to a smart sixth grader. That will help you keep things clear and simple. And critically, follow the traffic light rule. During the first 30 seconds of an utterance, your light's green. During the second 30, it's yellow, and at 60, shut up. If you're on TV, it's 20 seconds green, 20 seconds yellow, and then silence. All of this may feel anathema to many, if not most, academics, except the scholars who understand that those tactics are key to going from anonymous academic to influential, famous figure. Thank you for watching. I'm Marty Nemko.